Good morning. Glad you're watching Morning Express. Time now for State of the Nation as we discuss the state of the nation with regard to the doctor's strike, to politics and the new education system that has also been introduced. And in studio to speak more about this, I am joined by three panelists. Right uh, on my left, we have uh, lawyer Degwanjiru. Many thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. We also have Immaculate Shem Shamala Immaculate, who is yes. also a lawyer. Many thanks for joining us. And last but not least, Mary Senate aspirant Gigi Duranira. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you very you. much. All right, uh, gentlemen and lady, this morning uh, we will begin with uh, the doctor's strike. We've been talking about this for so long. It's 61 days now since this strike began. And yesterday, the Senate Health Committee told doctors that this CBA that uh, they're talking about has been overtaken by events. Ndegwa, I mean, it's, it's way too long for us not to have an end in sight as it is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to see how these things have been unfolding for the last 60 days. And the, and the non-committal aspects by government to add this thing uh -huh. called the, the, the doctor's strike. Uh, I, I think uh, government does not feel the pinch in which one inch is feeling. Uh -huh. uh, because at the end of the day, even when they get some little scratches, they, 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 they board a plane and they go, they go to South Africa. Could be that is the reason why they are not willing to add this strike. Uh -huh. May I comment something about this called CBA? This CBA was negotiated by the doctors and government. And government cannot disown the CBA on the mere fact that they never involved one component. That is called the, the CRC. Uh -huh. Because by the time they were negotiating for this CBA, the CRC was in existence. They knew that the input of the CRC was crucial to, to, to having a legitimate document. Mm -hmm. So my question is, were they then honest in the first initial stages when they went to negotiate the CBA with the doctors? Secondly, the law requires a, uh, has a doctrine called the doctrine of ratification. Mm -hmm. That means if somebody was not involved in negotiating of a document or drafting of a document from the beginning, it means then that as long as that document addresses the issues that identifies with that other party who was not involved from the beginning, that party can ratify that document. Mm -hmm. Have they attempted to see whether or not the CBA can be ratified by the CRC? Because CRC can ratify that document mm -hmm. legally and it becomes a binding, doc a binding document. In my thinking, the problem with the CBA is not because it was not involved, the, the CRC was not involved. The, the, the issue is because of the implication that is going to have in other job sectors. Mm -hmm. That the other job sectors might also start saying, the doctors have it, it's now our time to also have it. Mm -hmm. Because, and again, again this is an irresponsibility on the part of government, and they don't care attitude on the part of government. Because they were given 21 days notice, a statutory notice by the doctors that take notice by the end of the 21 days if this thing is not resolved we'll be going to the streets they ignored uh -huh. because of what i'm calling the don't care attitude now let's come to what the court is doing now even after the issuance of the 21 days notice the doctors now actualize the strike which now becomes a legal strike there's nobody who can challenge it uh -huh. They go ahead, the, the, the Council of Do uh, Governors goes ahead and files a, a, a petition in court. The court issues conservatory orders to say, you guys, you cannot go to strike. Mm -hmm. What became of the statutory notice which was issued pursuant to the law? Right. The other thing is, the Constitution guarantees Kenyans the right to pick it. When the court comes and issues an injunction or a conservatory order and tells people, you cannot pick it on this issue, what becomes of my right? Mm -hmm. So I believe government must show a bit of commitment and a, a bit of honesty in the way they are approaching this issue. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a very, very big issue uh, come, come, come the campaign period. Right, right. And it's actually the high time the president and the deputy president also takes up this matter. Mm -hmm. I used to see President Moy, and I used to admire the way he, he dealt with those issues. Look at the, 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 in 1997 when the teachers went to strike. President Moy then implied and applied his wit, his wisdom, mm -hmm. and was able to resolve those guys' problems. And they went to class without even a single penny. 
19 years later is when we are concluding the issues of the teachers. Uh -huh. What has happened to the wisdom in the presidency and the deputy presidency and in government? All right. Very credible issues being brought up here by Ndegwa Nziri and Shamala, also yes. being from the legal profession. Uh, what are your thoughts on the claims uh, or on the issues Ndegwa is bringing up? Thank you. <clears throat> I will base my, my opinion from the human rights perspective, uh -huh. you know, um, and more so biasness on women because health issue affects women Mostly. so dearly. Uh -huh. And so for me, the intention, I mean, the government has no goodwill to come to a, a balancing situation uh -huh. where there's a win-win situation for both the citizens and the doctors. And I'm, I'm, I'm finding it funny that a government cannot respond to a fundamental right like health. Uh -huh. Because really the circus has gone for too long because the judiciary is uh, uh, expressing itself in a manner suggesting that uh, probably the doctors are not right. Yet the doctors have a right to say, look, we have also spaces and we need our rights to be looked at. You know, we have welfare issues. We need access to issues. We have opportunities. We need to grow. And then if the government is not responding, then for me, the government has no business being in place because it's not responding to the demands of the citizens, and yet the citizens are paying tax. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I know doctors, I mean, the citizens are saying, look, we are dying. But then you have to balance. The citizens have also to look at doctors are human beings. Mm -hmm. They can't be treating you, and yet them themselves cannot afford that healthcare system. And so for me, the, the circus has gone too long, mm -hmm. and I think I support what the doctors are doing, but also I think the government has to be put into, you know, a real pressure from other stakeholders who should join the doctors so that the government can respond. Because it seems this government loves responding after being pressured mm -hmm. over issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And Gigi, let's get your thoughts on this, not just on the doctors' strike, because there's been a lot of uh, industrial action. Now teachers, uh, lecturers rather, are also out. Mm. Uh, we have uh, nurses who also, uh, although theirs has been resolved, were also on strike just the other day. I mean, where does the buck stop? Thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, Really, on the case of uh, doctors, it's really sorry uh, because uh, many people have even lost their lives. Mm -hmm. There's someone struggling somewhere now who can't access uh, uh, medical services. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really tough because it's touching on lives of people. But I think uh, I can differ a bit uh, with my friends because I think uh, we admit it's a problem and it's a challenge. But I think uh, it's for all of us. Mm -hmm. It's not just about government. Because if the Senate committee has sat and come, up, come out with an opinion, I don't think the Senate Health Committee is government. Mm -hmm. And I think these are sober people. I think uh, they are the representatives of everyone in this country, the 47 counties. And uh, even the mixture, the composition of the committee, uh, is drawn from across all, I mean, all counties of Kenya. But I wish to say that we really have a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a problem, but uh, we need to bring on board all stakeholders. And I think the way out of not just the doctor strike, but uh, all other industrial issues that are arising, it is dialogue. And uh, we must uh, put things into perspective. I know what the SRC is doing uh, it's something rational mm -hmm. because uh, we cannot have a, a imbalanced uh, remuneration uh, arrangements within government, you know. Uh, therefore, I think uh, the issue here is negotiating, but negotiating, they've negotiating. They've been doing that. They've been mm -hmm. negotiating and engaging in dialogue for the past 61 days. It is still the way out. No one can have his way because if everybody comes f saying, I want to be paid this amount of money, mm -hmm. I want this implemented today, you cannot commit to what you don't have. Right. I think at the end of the day, we need some, we need, but it's, it's was, an issue wasn't of seeding. Commitment, wasn't commitment done when the CBA was signed? It was done, but uh, a lot has also, uh, a lot of, has, has also happened. You know, by the time it was done, health was not even a devolved function, mm -hmm. but now it is. Mm -hmm. So there is another, you are telling somebody to implement something that he never signed. Right. It's a complicated thing. And I'm not saying that the doctors are doing the wrong thing, but I'm saying, there are many different stakeholders who must be brought on board, and not just in these issues. All the national challenges we are having, whether it is uh, 
uh, KDF being in Somalia, whether it is, it is an issue of bringing everybody together. Mm -hmm. We sit, we negotiate, and we see what is practically possible for our nation. All right, That's all right. my view. But I hear you, uh, I hear you, Gigi, but I mean, uh, Ndegwa, dialogue is, you know, it's, sure. it's always the first solution to everything, but it's not working. Uh, let me tell you, dialogue cannot work in this country. Mm -hmm. Because the moment <coughs> some functions of this country called for dialogue, I think that was 2014, uh, guys started saying, we uh -huh. You know, the problem is, this country, we look at things from where you are, you, you, on the pedestal in which you are standing on. Uh -huh. If you are called and you ask for dialogue, which is genuine, nobody will give it to you. Uh -huh. If you are in Jubilee and you ask for dialogue, they also start looking, God will start looking for you from another perspective. So the question of dialogue has been politicized, yet it's the best way out. We have so many things that this country is ailing from. Today, people are dying of hunger. Look, Abbas Goulet, the, 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 the chairman of the, the Red Cross, has now started coming up with a very noble idea of the campaign of adopting a household. Mm -hmm. And he says, in, in, one, in, three, in one month, you're going to spend 3,000 at least feeding that one household. Mm -hmm. That is something, a task that should have been taken by government, but we are now seeing the non-stake actors taking responsibility in trying to, to, to solve the plight of Wanjiku. Mm -hmm. Look at where Abbas Goulet sits. I could classify him, ma, ma, uh, classify him in the so-called the, the civil society group. Mm -hmm. This is a civil society that Jubilee does not want to see or hear about. Mm -hmm. Yet when they come with a noble proposal of probably adopting a house like what Abbas Goulet has started, the Jubilee is silent. The only thing that they know is to go around the country asking for votes. And not just around the country, even around the Africa, asking, spending a lot of colossal amount of money asking for votes on behalf of Amina Mohammed. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about Wanjiko. Needless to mention that this country is ailing. And, and I think it's a high time that we accept that there is an elephant in the room and we must start looking at how to resolve this problem because the government of the day is not responding. Mm -hmm. All right, that being said, I mean, Shamala, problems have been stated. How yes. then do we solve this? Yes. Well, you know, we love catchy words like dialogue, you know. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, dialogue has been done. And um, there's no goodwill from one partner. Even when you're being seduced, there should be goodwill. But if one partner is not um, conforming to the, you know, terms of reference of the dialogue... And remember, both sides are accusing each other of lacking goodwill. True. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see it clearly, really, the doctors have really a, a, a case there. Mm -hmm. Look, for years they have been neglected. Yet they've spent years, you know, studying. Mm -hmm. Yet the people who have not really, you know, um, you know uh, acquired... Uh, higher learning like the doctors are actually earning more than the doctors. So are we glorifying the somehow uh, semi, you know, an educated class than the educated? Mm -hmm. Seriously, the doctors have um, a case there. But then it beats logic that a government cannot sit and respond to such an issue of medics saying, look, we only want to be treated as citizens, mm -hmm. not as second-class citizens. It's very easy to sit down and be honest with that discussion and say, we don't have money, but we can look for money because there was money for, you know, lobbying for Amina to get her position. There was money for members of parliament. There was money for themselves. members of parliament. Uh -huh. Why is it when it comes to doctors that we don't have money? You know, I, and that's why I'm saying the circus has to stop, mm -hmm. really. And mm -hmm. pressure has to mount because when it comes to citizens, then the the, the, the government of the day or the establishment or the system feels, no, 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 let's stop fast. But mm -hmm. if it's their issue, their interest, then they really run fast with it. All right, yeah. all right. And uh, that having been said, let's move on to another topic now. And uh, this is, uh, uh, like you mentioned, Kenya has uh, money to lobby for CS Amina Mohammed. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was, you know, some say it was a commendable representation of Kenya uh, on the continental sphere. But Gigi, let's come to you. Uh, Amina Mohammed's loss of that position was characterized by a lot of information coming out, including the betrayal by Kenya's very own neighbors.
And uh, just yesterday, Uganda, through its foreign affairs, foreign affairs ministry, came and said they did not abandon Amina Mohammed. Uh, you know, they, they've completely denied that allegation. But is this likely to affect Kenya's relations with its neighbors? Well, uh, first I wish to congratulate uh, our very own uh, Ambassador Amina Mohammed. Mm -hmm. I think she is one of the women in this country that uh, really has proved that she has the metal to, I mean, she, she represents women in a strong way. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, even before she was appointed uh, an ambassador, I mean, uh, I mean uh, the, the CS in charge of foreign affairs, uh, she was chosen on merit. And I think uh, I would wish first of all to say that Kenya was fronting the right candidates. It, Kenya was advancing uh, even the cause of women. And uh, the issue of voting, and I think we should apply it even on the national elections that are coming, when you go, when you go, when you go for a function like that one, where you expect people to vote for or against you, you go with an open mind. Because uh, there are many factors at play. Mm -hmm. Don't go there, uh, OK, go with an attitude of wanting to win. But if, you don't, if you're not chosen, I think that should not be uh, a surprise because someone else will lose and someone else will win. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think, and even government has said that, even Amina has said, uh, I think uh, she mentioned that from her diplomatic background, that voting patterns of neighbors should not affect uh, our diplomatic relations with, uh, with, uh, with other countries mm -hmm. or our regional relationships because people vote in certain ways for certain purposes. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we need to respect that. Right. And I don't think it was wrong for Kenya to front Amina Mohammed mm -hmm. uh, for the position. Right. I think it was a credible thing. And uh, I think uh, we also need to minimize the issue of throwing politics into everything. Mm -hmm. Because even if we talk about Wanjiko, Wanjiko does not exist uh, uh, in isolation. There are so many other factors at play. Right. Wanjiko is affected by foreign policy. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, whatever government is doing, uh, and whatever other uh, organs of state are doing, I think they are doing it on behalf of Wanjiko. Right. Even, the, uh, for example, issues of, uh, the, uh, that uh, we keep struggling with every day, it's for the sake of the same Wanjiko. Mm -hmm. We can't just go to Wanjiko directly and say Wanjiko have everything and we bash everything else, mm -hmm. we'll collapse. All right. We uh, must put <laughs> things into perspective. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, Shamala, I mean, yes. do you agree with that? I mean, I, I agree that uh, foreign okay. policy is definitely very important. Uh, do you agree with him, especially in terms of priorities for the government? Maybe that's where we're seated together because we will not agree. One, it was not a gender issue. Uh -huh. So Amina wasn't profiling a women's issue. It was a country issue, mm -hmm. okay? Number two, yes, she, she is a woman, really, we cannot doubt her capacity, her ability, she has achieved a lot. But for me, the pertinent question I asked myself, was it a must for the country to go all through that, you know, process in order to make sure that she is, you know, chosen or mm -hmm. she is elected or nominated? Was it really a must? Was it a priority for this country? This country has other priorities, but was it our priority, our Wanjiku priority, you know? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I find um, it was more of maybe the issue of an establishment wanting to protect something, but not the Kenyans wanting, I mean, the issue of the wishes of Kenyans were not in play when they were doing all that lobbying mm -hmm. for me. I mean, and when you take a look at uh, social media, especially Twitter, mm -hmm. Kenyans weren't quite didn't quite feel the loss, if I can say that. And Degwa, why do you think that was so? It was so because Amina Mohammed's candidature was not a Kenyan candidature. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It was a Huru, uh, President Huru's candidature and uh, his deputy's candidature. We never owned her as our candidate. Mm. She was not representing okay. the views, the wishes, and the norms of the Kenyans. Uh -huh. Suffice to mention that why she was a vital candidate for the presidency was because she played a major role in the ICC matter. Mm -hmm. So it was now a payback time. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the appointment and the proposal for her to become the chair, I wish she did, was because the government felt that they owe her much of credit mm -hmm. because of the work she, she did. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to be honest with ourselves and with this country. One thing that we must be able to know is, during the chateau diplomacy that was started by um, the, uh, the, the, the former 
Vice President mm -hmm. uh, Kalonza Mosioka. How much money did the country spend? Now, during the Amina's diplomacy, how much did we spend mm -hmm. in the ICC case? The other thing is, during now the Amina's campaign, how much has the country spent? Mm -hmm. And are we justified as Kenyans to know how much this money has been spent? Do we have a right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the question is, is this money regulated under Article 226 of the Constitution, which provides the principles of how the public funds shall be spent? Mm -hmm. The question is, and I believe that is why some of the functions in this country feels that they have been excluded, is that there must be a question of inclusivity in the way we do things, even in the way we formulate our policies. Mm -hmm. So if the country has taken an agenda, the, and we call it the Amina agenda, that agenda is not the presidency's agenda, should be the country's agenda. Mm -hmm. And that is very well stipulated under Article 10, which gives the principles and the values of national governance. It provides that these principles and the values of national governance bites all state organs, all state officers, and every state actor is bound by these provisions, mm -hmm. and therefore including the presidency. When you're formulating a policy that Amina Mohammed should be fronted for the chair, at least we ought to have been told. I disagree with what Gigi is saying, that you cannot all, uh, all and sundry include Wanjiko. And that Wanjiko cannot all be always be included because Parliament represents me. Mm -hmm. If you look at Article 1, it has created what is called two levels of sharing of powers. Mm -hmm. And one of them is where Parliament directly participates on my behalf and where I have indirect participation. Why is that so? It's because the constitution that we adopted to ourselves is what is called the constitutional democracy. Mm -hmm which is founded on, on two principles. The first principle is a principle of delegated democracy, where parliament speaks on my behalf. And the other one is the participatory democracy. And that is where Wanjiko comes in. And that is why Gigi, when he goes to Senate, he must not forget Wanjiko. Mm -hmm. Because he has not been donated all the powers, and that he, has, he will not be usurping all our powers. Mm -hmm. And that is why Wanjiko ought to have been told, we have a candidate here, she's called Amina Mohammed, this is what she stands for, and this is why we are taking her to AU, and therefore the country can expend this amount of money towards that particular function. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we have been excluded. We don't feel part of government. Right, I mean, I think yes. even Kenyans just woke up to news that yeah. uh, well, we're going to Addis Ababa yeah. now for, <laughs> for yeah. the election. All right, so let's move on to another topic now. This is the IABC voter registration exercise, uh, which now enters its third week. Gigi, let's begin with you. Senate aspirant, Meru County, first of all, how are the registration uh, efforts going in that region? Okay, uh, <clears throat> let me say that, uh, though I wanted to make a, a, a brief comment. Go ahead, go ahead. On, on what Wakili has said. Uh, I think uh, it is uh, grossly wrong, Wakili, to say that uh, the, 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 the presentation of uh, Amina Mohammed was uh, a presentation of President Uhuru and his deputy. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. And uh, in as much as Article 10 talks about uh, uh, such processes, there are other acts uh, of parliament also that uh, uh, also show how certain things should be done. Mm -hmm. And also the issue of... Uh, 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 where Wakili uh, has said, uh, uh, anyway, the issue of uh, priorities. If elections come, if a time comes, and uh, we know that uh, a chairperson for AU is being presented, we cannot sit back and say, we have many other issues, we don't want to participate. Mm -hmm. It's like coming to 2017 elections in August, and then we say, uh, we have so many issues, Let's postpone elections. Mm -hmm. okay. And that is why I'm saying let's have sanity in the way we engage as Kenyans. Okay, there is the issue of inclusivity, I agree. We must cultivate a, 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 a culture where we tolerate each other. And we agree that if you're here, the three of us, uh, with my sister here and uh, my brother Wakili over here, if we want to move forward, we must agree in a realistic and a practical way, mm -hmm. not just every time trying to get out of uh, <laughs> context and trying to operate in a vacuum. Uh, because we have seen situations where we are even driven out of parliament 
even for matters that must be done within parliament, mm -hmm. and we are walking out of parliament to do certain things. Anyway, we have gone to a right. close on that one. <laughs> we are not talking about voter <laughs> registration. No, let's be realistic. Mm -hmm. But do you agree, uh, though? Do you agree, though, that uh, uh, as, as Ndegwa said, she was not a Kenyan candidate in yeah. terms of Kenyans yeah. weren't aware yeah. of the exactly. agenda that was being taken to yeah. Addis Ababa? Uh, <clears throat> let me say this. In democracy, uh, democracy in Africa is growing. Mm -hmm. There in the past, we even never used to bother how those, such processes go. So uh, uh, the, the process of identifying her may not have been maybe the way we would have expected it to be, but uh, I think we are growing by the day. And awareness is coming up as we move on. The mm -hmm. way Kenyans participate in democratic processes today is not the way they were doing in the 70s. So I think uh, the, a little uh, more could have been done mm -hmm. in identifying the person. But in my view, she fits the bill. She was a good person. I agree with Wakili here that uh, it was not a gender issue. But if, had she won, the gender aspect would also have come right. to show that Kenyans also believe in women. Uh -huh. Because most other countries had fronted men. And I think it would be again for women. Going to voter issues, voter registration issues, I think uh, <clears throat> it is uh, unfortunate that Kenyans are not registering as they ought to. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of talk out there about how we need to vote, you know. But because of the many issues that uh, maybe politicians have brought up in matters representation, the kind of uh, impact politicians have had in this country uh, most people don't see the need maybe to go and register mm -hmm. and they participate in uh, the whole election. And then even my concern is uh, the many people we are making to go and register because we are really campaigning every day, please go register. If we are using such effort to make them go register, again, shall we go back to use the same effort to make them go vote? Vote, right. I, I, I think uh, this is a challenge that uh, is across the whole country. Mm -hmm. And I think... Uh, it reflects on us politicians. When we tell people we want to represent them mm -hmm. and we want to deliver certain promises and uh, even issues of governance, when we put a government in office, when we put the opposition in office, do we really do what we ought to do mm -hmm. so that we inspire the Kenyan citizen to engage in civic responsibilities? Right. I think, I think it's mo it has more to do with the politicians mm -hmm. from across. So Kenyans have lost hope, basically. Kenyans have lost uh, hope in leadership. In politicians. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. And before we uh, speak more about that, Shamala, yes. there's, you know, the two weeks that we've seen the voter registration exercise go on, we've seen some very unorthodox means of getting people to register. Mm -hmm. There are areas where you can't even go to the market mm -hmm. without producing mm -hmm. your voter's card. Uh, there are areas where people are being harassed before uh, if they do not present their voter's card. I mean, yeah. is it a must? Is it, you know, is it a constitutional, you must register as a voter? Yeah, from a human rights perspective, um, for us to strengthen our democracy is the people have to be involved. Mm -hmm. And involving yourself is, you know, voting, you know. But again, it's voluntary. Right. But you now see that um, people are understanding that... Uh, for you to be successful, you have to invest in political power. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're seeing this, you know, an orthodox means where people are saying, for us, for a person to get into power, to be a president, it's by, by fire, by force, we must register. Mm -hmm. And again, if you see the pattern, the historic pattern of the political uh, spheres in this country, it's for the first time, uh, the president and his deputy and the opposition are getting out mm -hmm. and, you know, rolling their sleeves and saying, look here, we need to register. Mm -hmm. That tells you there's something. Mm -hmm. And for me, from a human rights perspective, I'm asking myself, why is it Kenyans are not psyched up? Probably number one would be they don't see the need. They've never benefited from this political process. Mm -hmm. And in fact, some of them say, look, we voted an MCA, she bought a car, he bought a car, he got another wife, mm -hmm. he has built a big mansion. And so probably they see as if people and are going are the to same place it. where they were exactly. before they voted. Exactly. And many of them, especially the women, you'll see them saying, we're not going to vote. Mm -hmm. I'm glad about the youth. They are getting out there and saying, it's our time. The virgin votes, you'll see there's a lot of virgin votes. These are the people who have never voted. But the ones who've been voting over years are actually reducing because there's that um, hopelessness because of unfulfilled promises. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't, I don't uh, promote, I don't support 
uh, people doing an orthodox way of, of um, inducing. Forcing people. Yeah, so forcing, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, probably Kenyans, we need to look at other ways. I saw Parliament discussing about persuasion and one... Uh, MP from my side, my, my place in Transoya was saying probably people should be jailed mm -hmm. for not, for not, yeah, for not registering. registering, yeah. But again, we ask, we have to ask ourselves as stakeholders, why is it for the first time Kenyans are reluctant to vote? Mm -hmm. The problem is not with Kenyans, the problem is with the system, the problem is with the political class. Right. That right. is where the problem mm -hmm. is. Ndekwa, maybe you could answer that question. Y yes. Why is it that Kenyans are reluctant? I want to join issues with what uh, Senator Gigi has said mm -hmm. and what uh, Wakili has said as well, and say that for the first time I'm agreeing with the Gigi that the problem lies with them. Mm -hmm. With the politicians. With the politicians. Uh -huh. <laughs> And now then the comes to ones, not me. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> the politician. That's why you want to bring it. <laughs> the political case. Now, uh, this campaign for voters' registration is not a genuine campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the Jubilee and COD are not genuine in the way they are doing things. They really do not feel they are not doing it because they want me to go and exercise my right to vote. They are doing so because they want Degwa to go and exercise the, the right to vote and redeem them mm -hmm. in, the, in the ballot. Mm -hmm. That is why the campaign started with the strongholds. Uh, President Huru Kenyatta went to Kirinyaga and Mount Kenya region. Deputy President William Ruto went to the Rift Valley region. Uh, um, retired uh, Prime Minister went to his region. Honorable Kalons went to his region. Now they are now going to these other scattered votes, mm -hmm. which they do not think probably matters to them. <laughs> right. <most. laughs> uh, and then why, why Kenyans are now feeling that I cannot register is answered by my father. My father, who could be, be probably watching this program, says that he started voting in 1960s and 70s. Mm -hmm. And to date, he's a poor coffee farmer, as he was mm -hmm. during the time of Kenyatta. <coughs> he's a poor farmer, as he was during the time of President Moy, he's a poor farmer as he was during the time of President Kibaki, and now he's a poor farmer as he was during the times of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. There was a clip that was going around the media, the social media. It was in a vernacular. It was depicting an, an old man somewhere in Ruaraka who is selling sugar canes. He was called somebody Gachari. Mm -hmm. Now this guy has a, has a very serious philosophy. So he was asked by by, he's a comedian. He was asked by, 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 by one of the guys in the media whether he pays tithes. Mm -hmm. He said he doesn't pay tithe because he stopped paying tithe a long time ago. And then he was asked whether he pays, he pays taxes. He said, I paid during the time of Muzungu. I paid during the time of President Kenyatta. I paid during the time of President Moy. Nikalipa mpaka wakati wa kibake, nikalipa nusu nikawacha. That's what he said. Right. Then he asked, what do I have to show for all these taxes I have, I have paid? He gave an analogy that he paid tax during the time of Uhuru, uh, sorry, President K Kenyatta, and he, was, he actually saw President Uhuru being, uh, being, being born. Eh? Mm -hmm. And then he says, Sasa baba yake ata nitisha kodi na mna gani, na mtoto wake ya kuja nitishe, na hakuna kitu ninaona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this apathy is, is, has actually been pre precipitated and triggered by government. Right. The inability of government to respond to Anjiko. The question we are asking in the streets, and I'm telling Kenyans don't, don't go and register as voters, it is, it is nonsensical, it doesn't matter at the moment, mm -hmm. is because what matters most to us, is it health facility or is it votes? Mm -hmm. Look, somebody from, uh, uh, look, those guys who are dying there of hunger, what matters to them? Is it food or is it votes? So government has precipitated this, this, this apathy, and then we Kenyans must then become, become emotional about the way we are going to vote and respond to this call. Mm -hmm. Because what the political class has shown to us is that redeeming them through our vote matters most than even our addressing our plights. All right, let so me just stop you back, there. Mm -hmm. All right, let me just stop you there before you continue, Gigi. Let's have a caller. Uh, Margaret Mboga is calling in from Sabatia. Margaret, good morning. What's your question or comment? Yeah, I'm easy, ma'am. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Eh, sasa unajua kisema go ahead sijuaji kidogo kizuri lakini najua tu kidogo kidogo. Na uliza huyu 
Mwese uyu, ndio nani uyu wamewani uyu mwebaba, uyu mdeku wa ndio wama nani. Na muuliza uh, hizi, nasikia maneno ya inasema ni mbuduri sana. Uh -huh. Lakini kwa upande yako, wewe unaona tunaweza weka raisi gani, una naweza tufanyia kazi katika hiki ya Kenya na tumitike. Kwa sababu, inaona una kutu wa kutu wa hapa. Haya mambo kuhusu Amina Mohamed. Amina ni mwana kutu ya doja. Wende kulimana na vingi za Afrika kwa na mjebo. Uyo kutu tumuke kongone. Na wale watu wenye walikunya ni mziki ukisema tumetumikia risosi ya Kenya. Na wale wengine wenye walikuwa na pigania, walikuwa na tumikia risosi ya wapi? He? Eh? Kwa sababu kukiwana wale kiongozi wengine wakikunya. Uh -huh. Na mambo kuhuku ICC, urejestaji wa kula. Mimi nataka ni kuambia hizi. Kula tunachukua. Na vile tunachukua kula, tunachukua kiongozi kwa sababu wako. Hakuna kula nye tunajua kuhuyu kwa mzuri ya kiongozi. Ama huyu ndio kubaya. Tunapia tu kiongozi ya kitabi hika huko, anatukea huka kitabana. Tunakunde kujua kitabanya kazi gani kenya hii. Sasa mina kaka uniambie, mikiprofi kazi gani tutapatia, una tatupahia kazi kenya kuliko uhuru kenya asanti. Asante sana, Margaret, kutoka Sabate. Let's also have Shannon from Busia. Shannon, good morning to you. What's your question or comment? Hello? Yes, uh, go ahead. Uh, it, uh, it is my free advice to our government mm -hmm. to embark uh, on how to stop doctors and lecturers strike. Mm -hmm. I think there is nothing bad to call uh, doctors and lecturers on a round table mm -hmm. and agree amicably. But here we are seeing the problem is just blame game from uh, both sides which has uh, stagnated the smooth running of health sector, likewise education sector. Mm -hmm. It is common people who are suffering. So I'm appealing, my appeal to uh, our president is to act on powers vested on him to make sure that Kenyans suffer no more because I think uh, it is the responsibility of the head of state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is my question. All right, all right. Uh, many thanks, Shannon, for that call. All right, so let's respond to some of those calls. Uh, Gigi, you want to respond to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really feel uh, the emotion of the two callers, mm -hmm. and maybe beginning with the one who spoke last. Yes, Margaret from Sabacho. And her question is, uh, she has a voter's <coughs> card, but which presidential candidate yes. is going to bring change? Yes. Let me say that uh, we have to create value as politicians uh, and as leaders of this country, because where there is value, people participate freely. Mm -hmm. If people are finding value in our political systems and structures, voter registration will not be an issue, mm -hmm. because they would know this is where our positivity comes from. And I'm happy when we talk about government, but I also want to remind people, especially this time of elections, that this, at this time in Kenya, we have two levels of government. Mm -hmm. When you hear of government, we are not talking about the national government alone. We are thinking about the county governments. Uh, because this is a cry we are hearing from almost all over the country, where people are saying we received this number of billions. When you look on the ground, we cannot see it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also an issue of members of parliament, where you hear we received 100 million worth of CDF, uh, which means if you have been receiving an average of, say, for example, 100 million for five years, that's 500 million. But when you go to a constituency, you cannot account maybe even for 300 million. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a, cult a Kenyan culture problem where we have allowed impunity uh, uh, to thrive. Mm -hmm. And this partly answers Margaret's question about choosing. We w Margaret wants us to better the performance of the leaders we choose. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, uh, in my view, the leaders in government today, from the county level, you know there are those who are in the county government leadership, and there are those outside in the county who are clamoring, saying we want to remove this governor and take over. Mm -hmm. And this is happening all over, in Imeru, in Kisumu, in uh, wherever. It is the same. And also in the na at the national level, there are those who are saying we want to remove Jubilee and go in. Mm -hmm. If you analyze those people carefully, they are one and the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are one and, and I the mean, same. You're a senator's parent yeah. seeking to oust another senator, the Mary Senator. 
what's the difference between you and these other politicians? For me, there are very many differences. I have not been uh, in, in uh, leadership before, mm -hmm. so it's not a regurgitation of people who have been in, in leadership. For example, we have so many people who have been in leadership for, say, 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. and they have nothing to show. But there are those who have been there for five years or 10 years, and you, you can really see they have performed. Right, right. Our, our call should be to the Mwanainchi, mm -hmm. and this is a civic thing, a responsibility for all of us, including my fellow Wakili friends here, so that we go out there and tell people, for those who have been in leadership in the past, let us analyze their track record. Mm -hmm. And let's forget about this ethnic and uh, tribal bigotry and all these things. Eh? Let's go back to, to where we come from. Let's tell people we elect people based on their records. Even if there's an outsider like me who is coming for the first time the way Trump came from business to presidency, mm -hmm. analyze the past of that person. Where have I been? Because anyone can join politics from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Even if it is Wakili, let's go and <coughs> investigate from the lawyers. How helpful has he been to the profession? Or he, is, he has just been a self-centered lawyer? Mm -hmm. How many young lawyers has he mentored? How many lawyers has he given internship who are desperate and they know nobody? You know, what other acts of development has he been involved in, mm -hmm. whether they are, they are software or hardware sort of engagement? Mm -hmm. Until that time, and I'm happy last week I saw you had uh, this, uh, that first guy who was here. All right, Dr. Kurokot. No, yeah, Dr. Okot. Though I found him bashing one side so much, so his element of uh, being a third force uh, is diluted. Mm -hmm. Be because to me, there is no difference between court and the Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Only that some are in government, <laughs> others are out. Right. Because somebody, for example, bolting out of an arrangement just three weeks to elections, the way, or a month or three months to elections, the way Kalonso Mosioka did, for example, you know he is the one who was doing uh, shuttle diplomacy. Mm -hmm. The moment he jumps into court, he becomes a saint, championing for change of governance. Mm -hmm. I think in Kenya, I want to tell the third force, we cannot have a third force before we have a second force. Because what we have at the county level and at the national level, it is one, one force. force. Only that one is inside, mm -hmm. the other one is out. We need a, an alternative narrative. Mm -hmm. We still don't have an alternative. Mm -hmm. And I don't think code is an alternative to Jubilee, neither is Jubilee an alternative to code. We are stuck as Kenyans. Right. If you go to the counties, the same scenario is playing. <coughs> the same politicians. I think we need to really look for value. And the moment we add value into the political system, the registration of voters will be OK. Mm -hmm. And nobody should punish anyone for not registering as a voter right. or right. even for not going to vote. We'll talk more about the voters' re yeah. registration, but Shamala, yeah. very interesting solutions that are being yeah. given by Gigi, yeah. ensuring that we evaluate the politicians' track record if they have been in government. Do you think that is something that uh, yeah. will bring sanity to this country? I think so. And there's alternative. There's NASA anyway. So there's alternative. The same players. Yeah, he so, says it's the opposition. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. The same players. <laughs> and, and I wanted to respond to Maggie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because Maggie has made me proud this morning. Mm -hmm. Maggie has represented a segment that is saying, if we want change, we must wake up and go vote for that change. Mm -hmm. We must remove an establishment that is not responding to Wanainchi, an establishment that has refused to hear the plight of Wanainchi. So for me, I'm proud to hear uh, Kenyans say, we must vote. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are saying out there, that if you do not want this system that has been very much uh, marginalizing people, mm -hmm. that has not addressed historical injustices, land issue, squatter issue, that is priority, its priority is different from the Wanjikus, then you need to go to that line. You need to queue. You need to register your disappointment by voting them out and saying, listen, we are voting you out. We have alternatives. Mm -hmm. That, for me, Kenyans have to do it. Because right. the moment they stay back, then they will be condoning, they will be promoting this establishment that is not responding to them. And so for me, Kenyans, Maggie, I'm proud of her. Let's go out there. Let's register. Let's vote. Mm -hmm. Wakili, please, that should be the message. Because if we do not vote, then we will maintain the status quo. Right. And right. we need change, and change is through the ballot mm -hmm. and not the bullet. Mm -hmm. And so for me, another thing I would say is let us be honest. There are people out there who have done well. Probably let us look at the structures, you know, the structures that are there to respond to issues of Wanainchi. Probably those are the structures we should love be probing around because they are good leaders, but if the structures are poor, then 
you know, the, the, the entire system is it's just control. exactly. Right, and uh, before we come to you, and Dego, uh, actually, yes. before, mm -hmm. before you finish your thought, let's take uh, Grace Isavia, who is calling in from Kitale. Grace, good morning. What's your comment or question? Good morning. I'm so happy about the morning express today. Mm -hmm. I'm calling from Kitale. Right. Okay. Um, I'm really happy about what is being said about the voter registration. Mm -hmm. And I would like to ask, especially Shamana, I know her by her name, Mama County. It is, it is difficult when you go out and find that people are not ready to register as voters. And yet the word is out and the leaders are moving, moving massively to encourage people to go and get this vote. But still the confidence is not there. So what do you think as leaders we can do about that? Because I think um, another question I would like to put forward, do you think they're going to have a peaceful election? All right, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you so much. That is uh, Grace Isavia calling in from uh, Kitale. Many thanks for calling, Grace. Uh, Shamala, maybe you could respond yes. to that question. Yeah, uh, Grace, um, I know her, and uh, she has been doing a lot of work in terms of registering women in Transoya. Mm -hmm. But it's true that people are not registering, yet a lot of politicians, a lot of church elders, a lot of uh, leaders, traditional leaders and elders have gone out there. But I think it's because Kenyans are not seeing the value as you will rightly put Senator Mtarajiwa. And probably we need to change our approach of civic education for the remaining weeks. Mm -hmm. Probably we need to have a very radical way of, you know, re-socializing our people to understand the need of why we need to vote. Mm -hmm. Probably, for example, the squatters, you need to tell them that if we vote the system out, we are probably voting a system in that will respond to the squatter issue, the land question. Mm -hmm. And that gives them, you know, that motivation to know that. So if we vote in a government that responds to us, then we will be resolving the land question. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to women, you need to tell them just not to register and vote. Probably you need to tell them about adult literacy. You know, mm -hmm. we need to vote a system in that will respond to adult lit literacy because a lot of women do not know how to read and, and write. Mm -hmm. And just not tell them, because I'm seeing the voter education that is being done, is we should just vote. So what about voting? Induce and persuade somebody to understand you're voting in for change. You're voting in uh, probably for your life. And you're, you're voting in for your generation. You're voting in an establishment that will um, safeguard your interest. Mm -hmm. And of course you're voting in, I mean you're voting out a system that never really looked at you. Right. That's very it's interesting. Sensitive. And I mean, uh, just, just, just before you continue, in Dagua, two yes, things are yes, being said yes, here. Yes, yes. On one hand, Shamala says, Kenyans don't have the psych to vote, but we must go out and vote in order to bring the change that we want to see. Mm. But on the other hand, Gigi brings in the fact that uh, the choices, the options that Kenyans have when they got the ballot are almost obsolete. Uh, when you take a look at NASA, NASA has leaders that uh, two months ago were members of Jubilee. Yes. Jubilee has uh, members that just a month or a week ago were members of NASA. And so he says it's, it's just one, <laughs> Jubilee and NASA are just one thing, oh, and Kenyans don't have much option. I mean, then what, what would be the way out of this problem? Uh, th thank you very much, Michelle, and I must thank you today because you invited two great minds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> three morning. great minds. <laughs> three, uh, and, yes, three. And of course, the callers are also amazing, mm -hmm. uh, beginning with Margaret and uh, Grace and the other caller. Mm -hmm. All what Kenyans are saying we are tired of being reduced into a voting Thank machine. You. True. You cannot just come to me when you just want votes. Mm -hmm. You have not addressed what Gigi was saying. You have not added value to my life. Mm -hmm. But when it becomes an electroneering process, you realize that your boat is sinking and you just need to save it, and all of a sudden the voters' registration becomes an urgency at the expense of other priorities. Mm -hmm. You might want to ask yourself why there is voters' apathy. And I want to give an example with what is happening in Mount Kenya region. Mm -hmm. You may want to believe in me or you may not. But when uh, President Huru Kenyatta joined together with uh, URP, Deputy President, they joined on the basis of peace and tranquility where there was conflict then mm -hmm. in 2007. So the people there were told you must, we must join with these guys so that there can be peace and tranquility. So then we have then been told that this, this union 
has to go all the way to 2022 so that there can be peace and tranquility. Mm -hmm. So the Mount Kenya region has been blackmailed. Mm. That they have to take votes and vote <coughs> this government, vote in Uhuru Kenyatta for 2017, and vote in William Ruto for, for 2022, 2022 for purposes of peace and tranquility. So they are now saying, so that we may not be seen as if we owe another community a debt to pay in 2022, this time around we are abstaining so that the whole group goes home. Hmm. And nobody is going to ask us, nobody is going to ask us to have a payback time. Mm -hmm. So this apathy has been precipitated by the way this uh, system has organized itself mm -hmm. and it has packaged its campaign. Because they are saying, uh, come 2022, does it then mean that we already know our presidential candidate in 2022 mm -hmm. if we are in Jubilee and that the doors are closed, nobody else can be accommodated? So they are saying this time around, don't touch. Let's go another direction. And the, the direction is that, that of voters' apathy. Mm -hmm. Look at COD. COD, voters' apathy is being precipitated by the fact that people from the COD region do not know whom they are going to vote for. Mm -hmm. There could be a motivation if they get a person who probably could be their presidential candidate. And the failure to have a presidential candidate for them is a misdoing in so far as voters' registration is concerned. Mm -hmm. As to whether or not Jubilee and COD can solve the problems of Kenyans, yes, the two systems, if put in government, can solve our problems. Only if the democratic space is opened. Mm -hmm. The constitution which I adore and uphold dear and which I defend mm -hmm. has created systems in where we can, up, we can hold these guys to account. For instance, if somebody wants to impeach the president, the constitution has provided for that system. But where do you impeach the president when you have parliamentarians who vote on the basis of ty tyranny of numbers and not on the basis of rational, not on the basis of reason or wisdom? Mm -hmm. You see? So at that particular time, we are unable to hold the presidency into account because when you go to hold the presidency into account, the tyranny of numbers kicks in. So what I would urge Kenyans to do is to go and register. I withdraw my first Thank remarks. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Register and vote <laughs> for people who have value and yes. sanity. Yes. Mm -hmm. We vote sanity yes. into parliament. Good. We vote sanity into the county assemblies. Mm -hmm. We vote sanity into the governorship and vote sanity into the presidency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is why the question of evaluating one's performance is concerned. I remember where I come from, Kirinyaka County. Mm -hmm. I come from a ward called Jokene. Basically in Jokene ward, if you're driving, you'll have to leave your car somewhere and probably walk. Mm -hmm. Even during dry season like now, because the roads are impassable. They're impassable during the dry season and they're impassable during the wet season. When I called the MCA, he's called karaoke, I called him and I asked him, what, what became of our roads? He said, drive our tractor halikufa. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Uh -huh. And then I asked him, was there only one driver? The, that's why the roads cannot be repaired. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because one and, driver passed away. And then away. look at the way his, right. the, these MCs are doing as I sum up and what the MPs are doing. Mm -hmm. They are using these kitties, the CDF mm -hmm. and, and, and the words kitty, to all voters. True. To an extent now, they are going to those desperate voters, giving them 1,500 as bursary mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the school fees. Right. The question <laughs> is how much value does that 1,000 vote, uh, that one, that, the 1,000 shillings add to, to the process? To the free, yes. uh -huh. So we must begin the dialogue. Ourselves. And we must have a partnership between the media, that is the fourth estate, the civil society, and Wanjiko. Mm -hmm. Those are the most important components which changed this country all the way from the fall 
of the of the uh, or the from the fall of the of, of the Berlin Wall. All right, all right. He uh, must form that coalition. And uh, that uh, comment now brings us to a close. Thank you so much for joining us in Thank studio you. for this conversation, lawyers and Degwa Jiru Shamala Immaculate and Mary Senatorial Aspirant GG through Nira joining us here on a State of the Nation, a conversation that brings us to a break here on Morning Express. Remember, for those on our KTN Home Channel, Life and Style is coming up next. For those on KTN News, our top stories this hour are coming up in a few minutes and of course at Tech Central later on. Don't go too far.